Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to finish our website interaction that we started in the last video. So if you haven't checked that out, we created this design and now we're going to finish it up with the prototype to create the final interaction. That's today's video. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. So let's go ahead and start with our interaction. I'm going to select the starting artboard here and go to the prototype tab and we'll just grab the image and drag it a wire to the end state. This is going to be a tap auto animate. And for most of these interactions, I'm going to be using ease out. I don't think it looks as good with ease in on this effect. And for the duration, I'm going to go with two seconds. So I want this to be a pretty lengthy animation. So if we select this, set this to the home, we'll just leave it at flow one and hit the live preview. Now, when we tap on this, it's going to auto animate that card in everything else is going to flash because it's not set up but that's okay we have the card doing our 3d animation we'll go ahead and fix the rest of that in just a minute let's add our interaction back so i'm going to select the card on the in state and drag a wire back same thing tap auto animate ease out over two seconds so now we can go back and forth between the start and the in state all right, next thing we need to do is make sure our hierarchy is the same for both artboards. So if we select the starting artboard and we go into our layers panel for that, I want to make sure the navigation group is on the top of everything. Then I want to make sure that my masked text, so I'm just going to double click on that and change that to heading, is on the very bottom because our card is going to slide over top of that. And then our image, I'm just going to call this image and it's very important on the end state that we name those exactly the same so i'm going to go here into the layers panel on the back we're going to make sure this says heading we want the navigation all the way up top and then right above the heading we have our card we want to call that image so let's just double check Good. And now we need to prototype our links and our text. So with these links, I want to do two things. I'm going to have them slide in on the animation from the start to finish. And then I want a hover state that slowly goes black as you hover over them. And I'm going to do that with component states. So with this, the easiest way to do this is find the longest link you have. So that would be trusted brands here. It's the longest one I have with a width of 674. So I'm going to grab that one and hold alt or option to create a duplicate. And then just to make this simpler, I'm going to go into the pasteboard with this. So this is all we can see. So we're going to have two masks, one for hiding the text and one for the black text transition. So I'm going to create a duplicate of this either by command C command V or holding alt or option and dragging it out. So with this selected, I'm going to change this to our black color we're using. Grabbing a rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and create my masks for both of these texts. And these need to be the same height and width of our text. Just like that. And why not? We'll just remove the border from these as well. So now I'm going to select both of these and hit Command Shift M on both of them to mask them with that rectangle. With that, I'm then going to drag the black one on top and just make sure they are perfectly on top of each other. With that, we can select both of those and hit Command K to create a component state out of that entire group. So I'm just gonna name this something like nav link element. So if I go into the layers, we can see we have two masks. So I'm gonna call this first mask black text mask and the one on the bottom, the white text mask. So now we need to create the default state for our component. And the default state, all we need to do is go into the black mask, grab that rectangle and drag it all the way over to the left until the text is completely hidden. So now all we can see is the white text, and this is our default state. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus icon and we'll create a hover state. We'll just name that hover state. And for the hover state, grab that black text mask rectangle and drag it back over to its original size. So now when we hover over it, that rectangle is gonna expand revealing the black text. We're gonna set this back to the default state and select the plus one more time. And I'm gonna create a state called hidden. And you guessed it, we're going to hide the text completely. So right now the black text is hidden because the rectangle is over here on the left. So with the white text, I'm now going to grab the text itself and drag it outside of its masking rectangle. 
So our rectangle stays in the exact same position and our text is just slightly below it. So now if we click away, we can see absolutely nothing, which makes our hidden state. So I'm gonna turn this back to the default state and I'm gonna drag this into my design and delete the original text. So we'll just position that back there. Now we need to do this for the rest of the links. So I'll do it once with you guys and then I'll speed it up. So I'm just gonna double click on the text, hit Command C to copy that. And then we'll just go over here into the pasteboard and we'll just grab our white text and paste that in. And this is why we chose the longest text. We don't have to fool with any of the mask sizes since the longest text has the longest mask size. We don't have to adjust this to fit exactly. We can just leave it like this. If you want to be very precise, you can. I'm just going to leave it at the current size. So then we want to change the text in our black variant. So we have that for the default state. Then we need to go to the hover state and change both of those as well. So we'll go in, grab the black text, change that. Go in and grab the white text, change that. And then finally change it to the hidden state and change both text to the new text. Setting that back to default, we'll just go ahead and drag that into our design, delete the original placeholder, and put it into the correct positioning. And like I said, I'll go ahead and speed that up for the other three links. And with that one, we have all of them updated to their own component states. It's a bit tedious to go through and do this for all of them, but it's well worth the final product of these. There is one thing we need to do before we go ahead and finish this up. Each one of these for the exact transition I'm going to do, we need to adjust the hidden state and drag them down quite a ways so that we stagger the timing of each of these. So for the first one here, digital design, I'm going to go to the hidden state and then I'm going to grab the white text and then I'm going to add 500 to the Y value. So I'm just going to do plus 500 to push that down. So when we transition from the start state to here, it's going to slide up into position 500 pixels. I'm then going to change that back to the default state. And for the next one, we're going to add a little bit more. So I'm going to find the white text mask text. And this time I'm going to add 1000. So plus 1000 thousand which is going to push that way down again changing this back to the default state for services we're going to add 2000 this time so we'll find that white mask text and then just add 2000 for the next one we'll go with 3000 and the last one we'll go with 4000 and so that's going to make the timing for each one of these different so 500 thousand 2000 3000 4000 it's going to stagger their slide in effects now for our text we need to do the same thing except this time we're not going to add the hover state so very simply we're going to select the text grab a rectangle and drag one out the full height and width of our bounding box for our text grabbing the text and the rectangle Command Shift M to mask with shape. And we're going to hit Command K to make that a component. And then add a hidden state. So new state. Hidden. And we'll grab that text and drag it outside of its masking rectangle. And here I want the timing to be very similar to the last link. So I'm going to grab that text. And then I'm going to add 4000 to the Y value just to push it down. And then we'll change it back to the default state. So with that, I'm going to select the ending artboard here, go into the layers panel, and we're going to have our component with all of our navigation links right below our nav. So we're going to make sure that nav is up top. We have all of that there. Then we have our image and then our heading. Perfect. So I'm going to select all of our links and our text, hit command C. Then we're going to go over to our starting state make sure our layers are in the exact same order. We're going to paste this in with command V and make sure that navigation is on top. So we have nav, all of our links and our text, and then we have our image and heading. Now, all we do is simply change each one of these to the hidden state. Just like that. Then we can select our flow, hit the play, 
And now when we select this, our text is going to slide in really nicely. And then when we go back, it's going to disappear and everything's going to transition back to the way it was. Before I forget, we need to change this heading to 0% opacity in the end state. So we'll go here in the end state, grab our heading and just drag that opacity to 0%. And there is our final finished prototype here in Adobe XD. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more design and Adobe XD related content. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.